Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Sal Shepherd Post. How you all doing? And welcome to another episode of Chatterbox. Today, I'm joined by two very special guests. One consultant, Sonia Randev, and Great Britain basketball legend, Teddy Okaria 4. How you doing? Yeah, we're all good. We're all good, isn't we, Ted? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I'm great. <laughs> I'm great. I'm great. I noticed, I noticed, actually, as you were just about to say Teddy's surname, you paused a little bit thinking, I better make sure I get this right. <laughs> I better make sure I get this right. I get a better and make sure know, I get this right. another thing as well, which I noticed, you didn't even attempt to try and say my surname, which is really easy. So, um, yeah. Sonia, um, Sonia Randev. I said that, yeah. I didn't hear that. you say Randev. I didn't hear you say it. So, Randev. Um, yeah, just, oh, I didn't hear you Randev. say it. That's easier yeah. than easier than okay, That's what I was about to say because I didn't so, hear you Son, say it. Sonia, Sonia, I'm half Asian. You know? <laughs> Are you? Are you really? I am. I'm half. I'm oh. half. Yeah, I'm mixed race. Yeah, I'm half Asian. All right, so. this is gonna be this is gonna be very interesting now. <laughs> all good. Yeah, all man. Good. Yeah, man. So, firstly, I'd like to uh, introduce my guest. Obviously, Sonia, your sports consultant. Um, how long have you been a sports consultant? Uh, first British Asian consultant. Uh, going so uh, just tell us a little bit more about yourself and uh, what, what you do really um so in terms of the consultancy part of it I launched slick sport just after I left talk sport so I used to work at talk sport full-time um oh, predominantly great. mainly to get experience um, within the commercial side of things and also mm. the marketing because I'm very passionate about sports marketing um, prior yeah. to that though I started off in a completely different category towards like doing commercial marketing and PR so I went yeah. to uni and I studied journalism um, and graduated with a first and I always wanted to be a sports journalist. So obviously everything was going really well in my 20s, but then um, a few things happened. So I walked away from journalism, uh, just done a couple of jobs like full time. Obviously, I was never happy in those jobs because it was never my passion. It was never what I really wanted to do. And then just kind of fell into slick sport after I left talk sport. And it's just like looking ahead, not even looking behind now. Yeah, that's it. Onwards and upwards. The first city mm. to the stars, isn't it? That's what it's all about. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Teddy, um, British pioneer, British basketball pioneer. Yeah. What's going on, <laughs> mate? What's going on? Um, tell us more about yourself and uh, you know your plans, etc., mm -hmm. for the future. Obviously, we know you're uh, you've you've been stateside playing basketball, yeah. and uh, I just wanted to know, really, um, as a as a British kid growing up, um, how would you get into basketball? Because obviously, it's not a you know a main sport in this country mm. yeah, so yeah. i just wanted to know um what steps would you need to take to to proceed basketball as a career uh first off you have to pick it up you have to pick up a basketball go to a local park you know wherever you wherever you can go and play i know it's limited uh, in terms of getting indoor but um there's always parks available there's people to play i think it's a growing sport and it's an easy yeah. sport to play you just have to throw a ball into a basket learn the rules <laughs> pretty much. you know you have to learn the rules which are simple um, yeah, they then, sound simple you, enough. <laughs> yeah, sounds simple enough. Yeah. Um, but if you're young, if you're young, it's a it's an easy sport to go and, and play. You know, uh, learn learn the rules, get in with a local club, and then explore what options you have. Uh, I, I played with my brother, and my mum took me to the club, uh, took me to the park, so took me to I started our own club. That's how I kind of got into it. And then the options I had available to me were joining a national league club and then uh, getting scouted from there to end up going to America for university and then playing professionally. So get to get started, all you have to do is, is pick a ball up and, and fall in love with the sport and everything else will open up pretty much. Cool. Is it, so is it, is it something you've always wanted to do or was it mm. uh, something it just, it just came by? Yeah. And uh, Being English, you play football first. It's like a, the easiest thing to do. So that's what I started doing. And then just went into basketball because my older brother did it. Uh, went with my mom; she started a club. And then um, when when I saw how big basketball could be, it's like something I, I pursued. And I knew, I knew from young I was always saying in secondary school, like, "I'm going to go to America. I'm going to go to America. I'm going to go to America." And then 17 is when I left, and it's been it's been good ever since. What was the re what was the reception like when you got over there uh, as a British basketball player? Did you? Uh... Um, it was, it was great. It was great. First off, they like they they love your accent. You're completely new. Yeah. You're, like, yeah. you're like a foreign person, you know. And they're like, well, "How do you even play basketball? Like, this is a football country that drinks tea and has biscuits." So they're yeah. kind of new. It's kind of different. <laughs> but they, they loved it. They embraced it. And then you have to you have a, like a chip on your shoulder, being that person who plays football. You kind of have to prove yourself even more. 
because you're you're not expected to play basketball and they've got so many kids over there that they love to do it. That's what they do. So you have to be a little different. But I loved it over there and it was a great time. Uh so yeah, yeah. I mean, um I went I went to Chicago a few years ago to see the Chicago, yeah. Chicago Bulls. Um, mm-hmm. you know, um obviously basketball's uh like obviously it's alien over here. Yeah. Uh, do you feel, do you see it progressing anytime soon? Yeah, 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 I think I think it's on the me and Sonia speak about this often, like it's on the cusp of really getting big and blowing up. I think uh, there's more people playing. Unfortunately, with lockdown, we can't have the fans, but there's a lot of fans that come out to games that support mm-hmm. their local clubs, local teams. Um, it's an easy sport, like I said, it's an exciting sport, it's up and down, it's very quick. So, uh, I see yeah. it being very big. Yeah, because a lot of people do play it here. We mean mm-hmm. do play it. I mean, obviously, yeah. I'm a mid- I'm a midget, so I would, yeah, never, yeah. <laughs> I would never be a basketball player. So you mm-hmm. know, so, yeah, but yeah. even for even for health, you know, just exercise, just team sports, fun stuff, that all adds to it. So I think it's it will grow in terms of people who see that people love to do it, and those who want to turn professional and and have the ability to, then good on them. Sure. So. The reason I got you guys on today, because I wanted to talk uh, a bit about social media and mm-hmm. um, the effects on social media, uh, what's what's going on, especially during the pandemic. Um, I interviewed a footballer the other day and um, it was crazy because it was a rival uh, player who used to yeah. play for my club, Man United. So because it was a rival mm-hmm. player, I got a lot of abuse. Um, I just wanted to ask you a question about what do you feel uh, social media um I mean, we got a lot of online trolls and stuff yeah. like that. I just wanted to feel what effects do you think that has on on people who are already, you know, have certain uh, problems with mental illness and anxiety, etc. I just wanted to know, uh, have you ever come across uh, this type of um, mm-hmm. thing within social media? Uh, I've come across trolls and, and even people who use their real accounts who always throw some hate or some negativity some in some form. It's never been uh, so uh, bad so that it's impacting my mental health. But I understand where it could go really wrong. You know, for some people, like, this is as much as you have your job in, in your field, like, this is somebody's job and livelihood. So it impacts people a, a lot. I know that, um, uh, like, for example, I played for a team in Greece and one of my friends played for a rival team in football. So he played for Pauk and I played for a team that was uh, the rival in basketball. And I posted him because we went to the same school. And then their fans was like, yo, don't put that jersey up, F you, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, whoa, you know, like on social media, you don't even know the relationship we have. And my agent had to call me and then say like, oh, this is the situation. I'm like, even so, if that's the situation, that doesn't mm. make it right, you know. But mm. it's, like, media is tough. It's kind of like a double-edged sword because you have fans that really love to reach out to their players and in, that's where they can interact with players. And then you have some that just use it recklessly and use it for an opportunity to say, oh, you're terrible, you're this, you're that. And at the end of the day, it's still a game, but you're affecting someone's life more. Than, exactly. Yeah. You know? and, uh, so uh, the difference between rivalry and hate, because we all mm-hmm. have, you know, family members who support a rival club. Uh, yeah. This is this is what I'm trying to explain to people. It's not hate. It's just a sporting rivalry. Yeah. You know, and and when you get on the, you bring it onto hate. That's when it starts getting a little bit dangerous. Mm-hmm. You know, you yeah. start getting on a personal level, etc. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I mean, um, obviously, Sonia, um, you you obviously uh, you had issues with uh, alcoholism in the past, mm-hmm. and um, I can imagine being on social media during that time if, if people were trolling you etc it could it could really have an adverse effect on you on you mm-hmm. uh, to the for the worst you know so um to be honest with you in terms of my addiction um it's pretty much been it's pretty much been going on for 15 years although i'm in a far much better place than i was opposed mm. to those 15 years ago um pretty much social media was non-existent when i first realized that i had an issue so i guess to a certain degree i was probably quite lucky in that respect if that makes sense um yeah. but obviously as i started speaking more openly about it um because it's important for me to use my experience to encourage more british asian women to speak up because during yeah. my time there was no asian women speaking about it so it's important for us to eradicate that stigma of shame we should be able to talk about a problem that we have without mm-hmm. feeling that shame um mm. 
but just to touch on social media, yeah, every single interview that I've done or when I've openly spoken about my issues with my, you know, with my drink in the past, I've had a lot of support. Um, but mainly outside of the Asian community, which is quite weird. Uh, <laughs> um, but with you being, <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, like, actually, I should have rephrased that. That's actually quite common because you will find common, people yeah. within your communities that will not support you mm. when you're doing yeah. good. They won't, they won't mm. shout praise to you. You know, they won't show public appreciation for you. It's almost like you talk about this rivalry and you talk about this competitiveness and you bring it into a much wider landscape. We're mm. all competing with each other still. Nobody's really generally from the heart very happy for you when you're doing well. Um, but I did have an incident where I was on Twitter and I did class someone as a very good friend and we had a little bit of a, of a you know, a back and forth. I was quite mm. disappointed in that because, you know, for me, it's like I classed you as a friend, but yet you felt the need to call me out on social media to try and embarrass me. Mm. But um, it obviously didn't end very well for him. <laughs> so, mm. um, and I can laugh about that now, but during that time, I was like, who the hell do you think you are? And there's a lot of people out there that probably wouldn't have the guts to, to speak up or, or to kind of fight back against that person. Whereas I'm a different type of person. I will stand up for myself. But imagine yeah. those people that like they're on Twitter and somebody's called them out. Somebody's throwing abuse at them. And it, it's literally just driven them to a state of mind where they're like, no, I'm just going to completely delete all my social media. I'm so embarrassed. I'm so ashamed. You know, this person's like literally called me out almost in a public forum because that's mm. what social media is, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, and anyone and anyone can use it as well. And yeah. this is the thing. Anyone can reach you. I mean, I can imagine what it must have been like, what it would have been like in, in the past with uh, certain athletes. Uh, you know, without social media, it was bad enough. I mean, we had David Beckham years ago, uh, mm. you know, with the, the 1998 uh, incident in the World Cup. You know, can you imagine social media was around then? Yeah. You know, what, what would have happened and what the amount of abuse he would have got? Because it's too easy for... I feel for for members of the public to get access to to, to people mm. and to to because um, you know as much it's, it's naive to think that everyone's perfect, everyone's nice. We don't yeah. live in a perfect world, and mm. you know you're going to get the worst of the worst because they can hide as well. This is the problem. Right. They can hide behind fake profiles. They can hide behind fake pictures, and you know yeah. they can they can say whatever they like, and they can get deleted. Then they'll just start another account. What do you think, um, Teddy? could be done about this do you, do you feel twitter should uh use like um id checks and yeah. passports etc before someone starts an account it, i think it's tough to to do it that way i think there should be some sort of verification you shouldn't just be able to make the little egg account and then just say whatever you want yeah you know? mm -hmm. i don't i don't know the exact process there may be they need to set up a kind of team that regulates uh, maybe a football side uh, of a, a football department that regulates tweets, you know, because some footballers like have millions of followers and Twitter and Twitter and Instagram, social media is 24 seven. So whenever you mm. pick up your phone, you're exposed to that kind of uh, positive uh, comments or negative comments. So maybe they should have like a team that works around the clock or senses certain words or whatever they can do to bring those, those down or block them things. But, uh, I think it goes to on on every sports club to to make sure mental health is a big thing in within their club and they yeah team, absolutely to, totally agree with that you yeah. know to, to speak on mental health or have a, a outlet where mental health is discussed so they can build it to a, a place where you, although it it shouldn't happen where you can put your phone down me and Sonia speaking it's like if I get negative comments I'll put my phone down if I get if I feel like I post something I don't don't, don't know what the reaction is going to be I just put my phone down but not everybody can get to that level and when you have athletes with millions of followers or hundreds of thousands of followers it makes it very tough for them to want to be on their phone and then they come across like distant from their fans or stuff like that so i think twitter just needs to do twitter specifically needs to do like a better job of not making it so easy for them egg accounts to to become registered and and stuff like that maybe like an id service or something to get more verification on who that person is and stuff like that yeah, or some a limit on how many or can create yeah. account on an IP address mm. or yeah. something, something like that. Because mm -hmm. um, I mean, I only come across it. I mean, my brother's been in the music industry for fifteen years, and um, he had a lot. Who's of your brother? Years. Go and tell us. Is he famous? He's not famous. He's underground. Um, he's worked with a few bods in the industry. Mm. <laughs> but, Who's he worked yeah. with? Who's he worked with? Come on, we're interviewing you now. Uh, he's worked with Sway, Decipho, uh, yeah. Yeah. Two Big Pants time. Out. 
Tupac Outlaws. He's worked with uh, people. Oh, hold from... on, what? T Tupac Out? What? The Outlaws, Tupac's group. Yeah. No, he... I know exactly who you're talking about. I'm like, <laughs> you just said he was underground. Yeah. Like, like, yeah, man. He's done. He's done a few bits, man. He's done a few bits. Rex mm. 32, AOB, oh, yeah? all these people. Yeah, he's, he's, worked... man, man. he's done it. Yeah, but. Um, yeah, he suffered a lot. My brother yeah, suffered a lot from um, anxiety and stuff like that in his mm. in his career. I mean, I never knew about it until I started doing these podcasts, and I was getting mm. attacked when I interviewed Jason McAtee. Was like, oh my god, I couldn't yeah. believe it. Do you know what I mean? I thought yeah, yeah. some of the things they were saying was slanderous. You know, yeah. uh, people ringing you up at your work, and mm -hmm. it was it was crazy. You know. Um, I just feel I feel like no, nah, this this needs to stop. And you report it, and it won't get. They weren't getting deleted. They weren't. Getting, yeah, but this uh, is this is the biggest issue, though. So sorry to interrupt you. In terms of when we look at these big companies such as Twitter, then you look at Instagram. How are they efficiently dealing with these particular types yeah. of you know types of abuse? Twitter is a little bit better, I have to say, than Instagram in terms of they are completely just get. You know, you'll never be able to have an account again. But like you yeah. said if it's not oh. the same IP address or however they, they're going to look to create yeah, yeah, their yeah. account, they can still create another account. So this is the issue that there is still a way for them to create another account, although they've been banned. Instagram gives yeah. you a warning, yeah. which yeah. is absolutely ridiculous because all you have to look at is what happened to the United players. When you look at Marshall, when you look at Rashford and the abuse yeah. that they had to put up with, that's yeah, not exactly. acceptable. Who the hell do these people exactly. think they are? It's especially, not acceptable. Especially, exactly, especially Marcus Rashford is doing well for the community. Mm. He's doing things for the yeah. community. Come on, I mean, I mean, he's trying to help people, and and you got people trolling him on that, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, with with Man United, it, it's it's like because they're the biggest club in the world. You've got so many different sectors of fans. You've got cults within the fan base, mm -hmm. you know, different uh, supporters of different players. You know, um, I, I can only imagine what Marcus must have been going through. You know, just don't just don't listen to it. I don't think. I think they just yeah, need yeah. the notifications off, and that's it mm -hmm. because. Yeah. Goodness me, it must have been thousands upon thousands of people. Thousands. You know, Damn. someone someone like Marcus Rashford should be celebrated for what they're doing. Mm. As as a guy like me who had uh, who had to rely on school dinners, who had yeah. to go to a school in a poorer area in East London, you know, I felt that what Mar Marcus Rashford was doing was absolutely ph phenomenal. I mean, someone yeah. on his stature, you know, and for them to be attacking him, uh, which I saw, um, is is absolutely pathetic in my opinion. You know, mm -hmm. so yeah, so so um, Teddy, uh, is there anything like um, obviously you've been in the limelight in regards to uh, you know basketball um, mm -hmm. in in America and stuff? So did did you ever come across such things? Uh, you know, whilst uh, you were doing your thing in basketball. Um, in in America, I've read like because I transferred universities. Um, that was more for playing time because I wanted to play more. I didn't have the the role that I anticipated having going out there. So, but before I transferred, you'd see like forums. Every university might have your forum or like an Arsenal forum or whatever, you know, where they talk about players and what these players can do. And sometimes you'd read forums and you'd read messages about you saying, "Oh, this kid sucks. Why did we get him?" Da -da -da -da. And you're sitting there like a part of you wants to prove them wrong, and a part of you's like. Well, I am not really playing. So, what, what do I really suck? Did it not your confidence, you know? And, and mm. at a young age, it messes with your head, and you don't know exactly how to get out of that, uh, out of your own head, which uh, played on my mind. And then, yeah. you know, growing up over time, it's like you prove those people wrong, but you prove yourself right because you, you stick to what you believe in. And at the end of the day, somebody's on the internet talking about you. So, they've taken their time out to talk about yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. You know? Exactly. And, who has the time and energy for that, to right. be perfectly honest with you? Right. Like and then David, from that perspective, it's easier to move on. It's easier to say, OK, well, clearly I'm doing something for you to talk about. If that's your, you're spending your time mm. doing this, let me just keep doing what I'm doing. And either you'll, you'll fizzle out or, or you'll end up celebrating or eating those words, which hopefully they do now because I've, I've, it's been successful the way I've, I've gone about things. So. Yeah, I 100% agree, especially mm. being a British British yeah. guy going to America, it's, it's hard for people to go to America doing right. their thing. It's like the same with grime artists and music or rap artists going to America trying to mm -hmm. rap. You know, yeah. they, obviously they think we're we're walking around with a with a sword and a cloak, just uh, you know, with a cup of tea in our hands, and <laughs> that's, the, <laughs> that's the problem. You know, so when you go over there, I'm a hip hop artist from London. Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah. what? You know, right. it's it's a bit it's a bit crazy. So yeah, I can imagine that, but I, to I totally agree. 
uh, with that mm-hmm. and stuff. So, yeah. So, uh, what are your plans for the future, Teddy? Have you got um, anything coming up? Or um, with, obviously, you're with the Bristol uh, Bristol Flyers. Bristol Flyers. Uh, finish this season out. See how it goes. We're trying to make the playoffs. Win as many games as possible. After that, either talk about staying here, staying in the BBR, I don't know yet. We're going to see how much we can raise the profile, blow it up and all that stuff, and then go from there. You know, Normally, you sign like one, two-year deals, see what, see how much you can improve, how much you can get done, and then if you can move on to a big club, then you do if the situation's right, which the situation has been here. So uh, then you look at maybe saying. So as far as that goes, I don't know 100%, but... In the near future, until the end of the season, try and win as many games as possible. And then with the national team, we have uh, World Cup qualifiers in November. So just mm. get ready for that stuff. It's been a yeah. pretty hectic week for Teddy, to be perfect. Yeah, there was, a, there was the win, wasn't there? There was a win against Germany, wasn't there? The Germany won France, yeah, for the Eurobasket qualifier, which is like a big European tournament. Um, that's going to happen in next year after 2022, yeah. This year's the Olympics if it goes on. So if that happens, that'll be great. Yeah, it sounds good. Things are looking up for the GB team, man. Things mm-hmm. are looking up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's good to see them. It's good to see them doing well, especially in basketball. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. uh, it's it's an Olympic sport, right? They they, they yeah. play in the Olympics as well, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, you, we didn't qualify for this Olympics. That's meant to happen this year. But if, if you qualify in the World Cup and you win a certain amount of games, you could qualify. Otherwise, you'd you'd play qualifiers in another tournament. So hopefully, we can get into another Olympics. We didn't. The last one was 2012 when we hosted. So trying to change things trying to get it trying to get there yeah man it's good to see you doing well man you're you're representing mate you're representing yeah. us yeah, yeah. you know trust me yeah. so, so sonia um I, I spoke to you earlier in regards to alcoholism and um i mean i was i've done some work for a company called nakoa which is, i know uh, them really well they've been quite supportive of my journey actually yeah with they got the callum best and yeah uh, me big. and callum best connected actually um just in terms of like on twitter and like because obviously he's george best's son god rest his soul um and obviously oh. living with it, his experience was a little bit different to begin with because obviously george was really really bad on the drink he was an alcoholic um oh. one of the best footballers we've ever produced you know obviously they he's irish but still we class it as he was a united player um, you know, and are, you, are you a phenomenal. United fan? Hold up, he me, both of us are. Yeah, yeah, but you're both United fans, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. That's good. It uh, was meant to it. be, but yeah, just going <laughs> touching back on that. Um, yeah, Callum, Callum's a really great guy, and like I reached out to him as well a couple of years ago in terms of my documentary, which um, has been commissioned. So it should be out this year um, in November. It's actually going to be out in Alcohol Awareness Week. Um, which makes sense for it to be to be kind of like broadcast during that week. So yeah, loads going on. I'm um, just going to continue to push. Um, it's all about personal growth, isn't it? Self growth, uh, working with the right people. Teddy's been an absolute pleasure to work with over the past couple Ooh. of weeks. Um, I don't know, he's getting on my nerves a little bit because I keep seeing his face everywhere now. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I saw you on the BBC. I saw you on the BBC. The next thing it's going to be, it's like ITV. Then it's talk ITV. sport. Then it's just like, you know, but it's brilliant. And this is what it's all about. It's making mm. things happen for these people. It's, put, it's looking at somebody and being like, do you know what? You have something good about you. So let the world see that. And that's predominantly yeah. what my job is when I work with people. I don't ask them. Not everyone has a hidden agenda. And I think mm. sometimes people are a little bit suspicious, thinking, why is she doing all this work? You know, like, uh, maybe she wants something a bit more out of this later on down the line. But if you ask anyone that's worked with me, I've never worked that way. I believe that I'll be rewarded when the time is right. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. exactly. You just, keep, you just keep working hard and just keep the consistency up. Mm-hmm. And that's what yeah, Listen, there's been so much work that we've done like last year throughout 2020. You know, no one cared about the females, the female boxers. And I was like, this is yeah. your time now. And we're going to get you out there. Now everyone's talking about them. And I look at that and I feel so proud to have been a part of that. Um, yeah. And that's me it's, as a personal achievement, you know. It's great to see the female presenters coming through as well. Female in football, mm-hmm. they're coming through great. I mean, and some, like, a lot of them are Asian now. So when I look at that, I'm just like, come on, you know, like it get proper yeah. like, yes, uh, more diversity, like more, you know, kind of equality. That's what we need to see. Right. Yeah, exactly. I 100 percent agree. I 100 percent agree. I mean, it's going to be hard, obviously, because obviously I've seen today trolls uh, on, on social media, uh, mm. you know, against one um, podcast. I've forgotten her name. Uh, they were just going in on her with uh, because she, because of her opinion about football because you're female and blah blah yeah. blah you know what I mean it's 
it's it's crazy you know it's absolutely crazy what you know but hopefully the more you know people press and you keep pushing the more you you know they have no choice Mm -hmm. they'll have to accept it you know and and fix up it's almost like they enjoy it as well um i think i've had this conversation with teddy before where we just over whatsapp and i was like it's almost like twitter and instagram love it because it just drives more traction towards both of their sites you know, yeah. they're loving it. They're thinking, oh, my God, this is getting people talking about us, whether it's negative mm-hmm. or positive, people are talking mm-hmm. about us. But that's wrong. shouldn't yeah. be like that. It's know? just traffic. That's all they care about is numbers. Mm. It's all they care Click about bait. is numbers, mm-hmm. traffic. Click it's bait. Bait. Yeah, 100%. You know, even if it's negative, people don't look at the negative comments. They look at the numbers. They look at the likes. Mm-hmm. look at the comments. Oh, wow, look at that. You know, it's causing hype. Let's talk yeah. about that, you know. Let's talk yeah. about that. It's, so that's I think, what them, I think it's important for either teams or I don't know, maybe in schools you need to talk more about mental health or mm-hmm. just a way to build your mental health to a point where you can take the bad with the good because the good is, is just a reflection, you know, of, of the bad. It's, you will get all the praise in the world and there has to be somebody that says something. They're, they're just the way the world mm-hmm. works. But if you're able exactly. to take that and, and, and brush it off and it makes them even, even more mad, even more to talk about, that's what they're doing on their, I don't know, Thursday afternoon. Yeah, you just keep doing your thing and just keep, you keep doing keep your it, thing. You know what I mean? Just keep it positive, keep the positive vibes. And, mm. you know, they, you know, that's the best way to do it. And just ignore yeah. them. They'll just fade away anyway, you know, yeah. so. And everyone yeah. needs a good publicist as well. <clears throat> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I have no publicist, I just me. <laughs> but I do. <laughs> Uh, well, you're doing a re- you're doing a really good job at promoting yourself. You know, it's good, always good to start at self promoting, and then you know, give it to someone else to kind of take over, and then you know, leads on yeah. to bigger and better things. But also, <laughs> I want to touch. Um, <laughs> sorry, um, I also just want to touch on what Teddy said as well in terms of mental health. Like, it should be implemented in in clubs, like sports clubs, and in schools, yeah. like people. Like these are professional athletes. We don't come from that generation. Mental health wasn't spoken about there. Many no, find it difficult to speak about stuff like that. Yeah. So there should be someone at each club that kind of checks in with these players. But how's your day been? Is everything okay outside of, outside of like the sport? Yeah. Is there everything all right at home? You know, mm-hmm. if, if you've got any problems, if you have, I'm here. Right, that exactly. needs to be done with every single club, not just in basketball, but across the board. So mm-hmm. the clubs internally, they've got a lot of work to do as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I 100% agree. It should be, I, I agree that it should be taught at school as well. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, definitely, hundred um, percent. We were never taught about mental health. We never heard of it when I was at school. Can you was... imagine being Asian and going home and saying, "Oh, I got mental health depression issues"? No, it's <laughs> don't, don't don't worry. Just go in the kitchen, make your chapati, all done. Yeah, and yeah don't done. worry about it. Stop, stop yeah, with that right. nonsense. Yeah. Honestly, but it was just like that. That's what it was like in that generation. You can mm-hmm. speak about stuff like that. And again, going back to the whole addiction thing, you can speak about things like that. Oh, don't worry. It's just a phase. You'll get over it. You'll get through mm-hmm. it. No, there's a serious problem here, and it has to be addressed. It has to be dealt with. Do you see yeah. what I, I, I did? Today, I didn't so. drink until I was 23. I didn't drink until I was 23, and that exactly um, the same as me. Yeah, because um, obviously, uh, obviously, being half Pakistani, I weren't allowed to to drink. And my yeah, parents, were, you yeah. know, you know. So, mm. but you know, I was always quite a shy guy. So I thought, let me try it. Let me relax a little bit. Let me have a drink. And yeah. it's quite easy to go over the top. You can't start yeah, getting yeah, yeah. addicted to it. You know, you yeah, start yeah. going in that downward spiral. You know, oh, one drink, why not? Mm. One drink, and you start every day. You start drinking. You start drinking. You know, especially someone who's um, who suffers from anxiety and you're mm. nervous and you know it, it builds up your confidence a little bit and you know it, it can easily become addictive i can see how it can become very addictive for people mm. i've eased down a lot in obviously uh for the, for the last years but um you know i still have the odd drink but um i'm not gonna you know it isn't as bad as it used to be so uh, mm. that's why i got involved in the coa and uh, i went around and spoke to various people on the street um, talking about alcoholism and it, it's crazy how how things you know some of the people I spoke to were doing really well for themselves and you know and just start, started drinking because obviously personal issues they have in their life and mm-hmm. I think everyone deals with their personal issues in different ways don't they so there's people that yeah. might get addicted to food and overindulge yeah. in certain foods I know there might be that. people that get addicted to <laughs> 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 it's curries, isn't it, in our tradition? So yeah. Oh yeah, curries uh, and bread and meat. You know, you can't. It's just crazy. Um, yeah. Yeah. And just eat and Uber eats hit the roof with curries like throughout lockdown. I'm telling you. Um, but in my case, it's more kind of like ackee and saltfish. So yeah, love it. 
Um, but that. yeah, it's very easy to like to get addicted to something. Computer games, you know, addicted to your phone, addicted to social yeah. media. Like it's not just addiction and drugs, mm -hmm. like the common ones that people are kind of a bit more aware of. So yeah. yeah, and these issues need to be spoken about. Like yeah, it, okay. it, it makes it easier. Like, imagine if Teddy came to me, just for example, because I have had people that I've worked with before and they've called me up and said, Sonia, I'm struggling. And I'm like, okay, what, what's up? Like, you know, then I have a conversation because I'm there for them as well. You have to be there for them. Yeah. Um, and it's easier sometimes to talk to someone outside of like your family network. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if some people feel like that, but I do. I sometimes feel like it's easier for me to go to someone that doesn't really know me. Um, probably because there will be less judgment, if that makes sense. Like they yeah. don't know your story as well. So they will actually listen to what you're saying. Um, exactly. But like, for example, Teddy could call me up and be like, Joe and Sonia, I'm struggling a little bit here. Like since all this media stuff, like everybody's like kind of knows who I am now. So, yeah. you know, what do I do? I kind of do I take a break away from it? Like my phone, my notifications keep going off. That's cool. Turn your phone off and we'll stop the media for a few weeks. Give yourself a break. You know, it's, that's hard, it's hard to imagine. It's hard to imagine life about it. It is hard. Phones. That's why I was a little bit, yeah. I have been a little bit worried because I've been like, oh, we've done a lot. And that can take its toll because also ultimately your job is an athlete to play the sport that you love and do good at it. The media has to work side by side with it. it yeah. That media cannot affect that person that's it's actually good, yeah. playing that sport. It's important for me to make sure that I look after him in that sense. So yeah. I'm giving you like an insight from somebody that's on the outside working with an athlete to make sure that I'm making sure he's okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. I've said that quite a few okay. times. I said, does that make sense? About three, four times now. <laughs> yeah. it's, one, it's one of them ones, isn't it? You know, I'm not being funny. <laughs> I'm not being funny. <laughs> it's because I'm a woman and I talk a lot. I do repeat myself a lot, yeah. That's, that's all right. Um, finally, to wrap things up, um, I just want to talk to uh, Teddy in regards mm -hmm. to uh, music. Musically, who are your idols in the musically uh, sport? Mm -hmm as well and uh who were your idols growing up so uh, well um definitely kobe bryant r.i.p uh yeah paul is somebody i looked up to because we play a position same position so yeah yeah I, I try to copy and play exactly like um a guy named steve nash great athlete mm. um music i listen to a, a lot of music being going living in america and living over here every kind of music i listen to drake a lot Jay Z, Future. I like hip hop, R and B, rap, whatever. Um, back home, it's probably Getz, J Hus, Skepta, mm -hmm. all the all the typical ones you go for, Chipmunk, them kind of guys. That's what that's what, yeah. I listen to. That's what gets me my game mode ready to play. Yeah, listen to some Reds. Yeah, R E D Z Z. R E D Z Z. R E D Z Z. Okay, okay. I'll say, I'll <laughs> <have> a, <laughs> a bit of a plug there. A bit of a plug, but yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. Drake, Drake's doing his thing over here in UK, though, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. He loves a bit of the UK. He loves it, know? man. Everybody's everybody's shifting over here, man. They understand that mm. we're doing great things in music and sports, and you know, so. Yeah, exactly. He's after the oyster card. That's what he's after. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he needs an oyster. Imagine seeing Drake on the train. I just don't know. <laughs> well, Jay, Jay, Jay Z went on the train, didn't he? He went on the train. To yeah, the he did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He mm. went on the Jubilee line to uh, his gig. Can you yeah, imagine? His gig, yeah, O2 or something. Yeah, that's mm. nuts. Me sitting there and just see. You wouldn't even believe it, you know. He's, uh, Can you imagine? Just he probably booked out the whole tube anyway. Yeah, so, yeah, <laughs> at the time, so no one could get on. Yeah, it's like, not this train, next one. <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> How about you, Sonia? Um, your idols growing up, your uh, your musical inspirations, and what you have planned for the future, and what you hope to to achieve. Um, musical. Like I'm old school, so I come from like that generation when the nineties R and B was like at the top of its game. Um, so I could list off so many artists, but that was kind of like my music. I'd say hip hop rap as well. Like I love DMX. Nas, for me, just didn't get mm -hmm. the respect that I felt like he kind of deserved. But he was kind of inconsistent as well at times, um, with all due respect. Uh, loved Tupac, God rest his soul. Loved Biggie, preferred Biggie to Tupac, sorry. Um, for me, mm -hmm. Tupac was a bit hardcore, very deep. Mm -hmm. But with Biggie, he was like a freestyler. So he wasn't the type of person that would write it down. Like it would all come and just roll off and just be yeah. so natural. Yeah. Um, cut close, twisted, 112, Keith Sweat, you name it. That was all my kind God, of music. God, you're going and taking it back. Next, <laughs> next as well, like all of that. So that was my music growing up. Um, and I still very much listen to that music now because it takes me to a happy place. Like, I think yeah, sometimes when you listen to something, it takes you to a happy place. I think music um, music is very important. That's why I asked the question mm -hmm. about music, because music in mental health, for me, it's, 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 it's helped me a lot. 
yeah. in yeah. my life. That's why I always ask about music and because uh, music can take you to a certain place in mm. your life, no matter yeah. what song you listen to. And no, absolutely, what... yeah. No, exactly. totally. But yeah, in terms of like, you know, athletes and like people that I look up to in the sporting world, um, Michael Jordan, phenomenal. I mean, when Last Dance came out, like everybody was just like, wow. You know, like you actually got to see a real insight to the man himself. Um, mm. You know, obviously Diego Maradona. I absolutely, I, I actually cried when he passed away last year. Yeah, because uh, he was like literally for me the greatest ever footballer. And I will debate that with anyone. If you want to talk <laughs> about Pele and Maradona, we can sit here all night and debate it. It's as simple as that. Um, big fan of Batistuta as well. When I was growing up. Um, oh God, yeah, great player. For me, just amazing. Figo, Zidane. Listen, they could all roll off. Like I wouldn't <laughs> say I have a particular. Footballer that I loved, but that was my generation again, and I feel privileged. Yeah. I actually do you, do you think, do you think they've them. actually declined? Do you think football's actually declined in that aspect in regards to the legends that roll off the tongue? You can't really, they don't really roll off the tongue now, do you think? I think when you look at Ronaldo, <laughs> then you look at Messi, just Ronaldo, don't you? yeah, you know, yeah, just yeah. Messi and Ronaldo. I mean, you got them, but they're our generation, they are generation, yeah. Mm, but my, yeah, yeah I, I guess so. But I feel really privileged. Like, I went to Old Trafford in 20, yeah, 2013, and it was like, you yeah. know, when you do the legends of Real Madrid against, mm -hmm. sorry, Real Madrid against um, uh, United Legends. And I was oh, yeah. there yeah, in yeah. the stands, like, watching, um, like, the lights of Zizou and, and Figo on the pitch, like, with skulls. Like, I, yeah. I, I couldn't believe I got to see something like that, like live. Yeah. It was an amazing experience for me. It is, so I guess yeah. with your lot's generation, watching Ronaldo and Messi play is like a big thing for you. I, yeah. I personally think you'd get excited I, I, over that. I'm 39. I'm 39. No, I'm, oh, I'm, you're the same age as me. <laughs> yeah, I'm 39. I've been watching United to our season ticket for 20 oh, years Oh, so now. we're not the old, we're not the old. I'm not as old as I thought I was then. <laughs> oh, that's made me feel so happy now. Oh, amazing. <laughs> it's made me feel happy as well. Teddy's a little I mean, baby, but very I'm mature for his age. He's yeah. the baby, but very mature for his age. Yeah. Wise head on his um, on his shoulders. Teddy, yeah. as as this is a Man United fan channel, um, I'm yeah. talking to you on um, what do you, what um, what do you think about Man United where they are in regards to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's position as I a think, manager? I think they're in a great position. You know, we haven't had a season like this for a couple of years now. We're, we've been dying to win. We're dying to trash talk back to everybody who's been bashing us online or in person. So. I think uh, he's been doing good. I think we give him a chance. We, we see what he can do in, a, in another year or two. And then we go from there. I think everybody deserves a chance. And where he's got us to is, is mm. in a great position. So moving forward, if he could keep us there, top four, win it, who knows? But I think we give him a chance. Yeah, I agree. I think he needs a little bit more time. Yeah. How about you, Sonia? You, you kept that Man United one quiet. You didn't tell me that you're a United fan, so... Did I not tell you? No, no, you said Teddy's a Man United fan. You didn't mm. tell me. <laughs> well, you follow me on Twitter, but do you know what? To be fair, I don't get that vocal about United like I used to, because uh, then it just ends up in debates with people. And I'm just like, I'm too intelligent for you. Like, I'm going to finish you. <laughs> like, it's just, it's just one of them ones. I just think, why am I arguing with you? Like, it's exactly. ridiculous. Um, exactly. Yeah, I've been a United fan since I was seven years old, but I will let a secret out as a Liverpool supporter from the age of five to seven. Oh, that's a big switch. Oh, my God. Should mm. I quote that? Should I quote that? <laughs> I've got no. The thing is, the thing is, though, I can't hide, hide away from it because everybody that grew up with me knew that knows that sorry so yeah it's not something i can hide from but yeah i was a liverpool supporter so um yeah i switched to united but i haven't won anything then i think we we're the first first team to win the premier league weren't we 91 92 season when we turned the over premier, to the premier league yeah the premier league the premiership then and then they changed it the name to the premier league yeah they went 35 years odd without mm -hmm. winning the title mm -hmm. one league yeah well that's me for today uh, mm -hmm. i want to thank you guys for joining me it really is it's a big pleasure to uh mm -hmm. to have you on and uh, to talk about this. And uh, I wish you both the best of luck in the future. And hopefully we can stay in contact. Yeah. And uh, Teddy, best of luck with your career, mate. Uh, yeah, yeah. You Thank know, you. Thank you onwards me. and upwards. Adversity yeah. to the stars. Definitely. That's what I always say, you know. Appreciate so uh, it, yeah. all the best, guys. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. Much. Take Bye. care, Sonia. Bye. Bye. Bye.